Today I'm going to show you the absolute basics for applying eyeshadows for beginners in the year 2024. If you're new here, my name is Morgan Turner. I have been a content creator for five years. I was a working bridal artist for three years. I was a teacher for three years and I've been beauty obsessed for over 12 years. I've worked on many different eye shapes, skin tones, and age ranges. So I'm gonna show you the most simple eyeshadow look, explain every reason why I'm doing what I'm doing, that's going to be flattering on all eye shapes. So let's get started. We are gonna focus close on the eyes today. Now, before we get into the tutorial, I do wanna talk about some eye terminology. No matter what tutorial you're watching, makeup artists, other creators, they're going to be using this terminology. So let's first learn the parts anatomy of our eye in terms of makeup. I have this photo here, which tells you the main terms you're going to hear is lid, brow bone, crease, upper lash line, outer V, lower lash line, and waterline. Now that placement might look different on certain eye shapes, so do keep that in mind, but the general area, let's talk about it, the brow bone. It is literally this bone right here underneath the brow bone. So when I say apply this to your brow bone, you're just gonna blend it under here onto this bone that's a little bit harder here. Crease is one of the most important words you would hear. Now, a crease is literally where the eye creases right here. Now, it's important to be able to identify your eye shape because when you blend in a crease color for eye shapes like hooded eyes, we're actually gonna bring the crease color a little bit above the crease so that when your eyes are looking straight forward, you can still see the color. But the general area of your crease is going to be either at the crease if you have open and deep set eyes or just a little bit above is where you're going to apply that crease color. And we'll talk about what that is when we get there. The eyelid is just the area pretty much on the eyeball. When you close your eyes, the lid, if you hear the term outer V or outer corner, guess what? It's the outer part of the eyelid. If you wanna get specific, outer V is going to be the V right here, but outer corner will do just out here. Lash line, so there's an upper lash line, just that line where your lashes are, and a lower lash line right here. And those are going to be the basics for eye application. Just like base makeup, it's just as important to prep the eye area as well. You might have heard the term, less is more. The less layers as possible on the eyes is the best for getting the most wear. If you put too much thick layers of creamy product on your eye, this crease right here that happens when your eye opens will also crease and separate whatever eyeshadow you have on. So our goal here is to apply as thin of a layer as cream products as possible. My number one tip to get the best look is most people have blue or purple in this part of the eye. Take a little bit of concealer and pop it right in here. You can use your finger or a brush and just press it. Don't take this over the eyelid especially if you have oily eyelids. Now I have a drier eyelid so I can get away with blending concealer all over my eyelid, but for most people and to play it safe, just put a little bit of concealer here to lighten that area. And then you want to go straight in with an eye primer. Now an eye primer is going to help your shadows blend better. They're going to help the shadows be more vivid and it's going to help with blending. Now one of the most basic starter eyeshadow primers that I'm going to recommend for you guys is the Milani Eyeshadow Primer. It's affordable, it's accessible, and it's really, really nice. If you're going to Sephora, one of my all-time favorites is Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. Or, I don't want to overwhelm you with too many options, but Too Faced Shadow Insurance is also a really good one. Just depending on what brands you might favor, I'm going to use the Milani Eye Primer. Now, if you notice you have an oily skin type or an oily eyelid, or you live in a more humid or hot climate, or in summer, something where your eyelids just get a little bit more wet, an eyeshadow primer like this is a must. I notice with myself in the winter, an eyeshadow primer isn't always necessary. When I'm lazy, I'll just put concealer all over the eyelid, but I truly don't recommend that for the best level of longevity. 
Now you're gonna give this a minute or two to dry because if you go in straight with your eyeshadow, that can make blending more difficult on you. It can get stuck to a patch because your eyelid is a little tacky right now. So give that a second to dry down. Now if you are a beginner to blending, blending scares you, a trick that's going to help blend easier is to take whatever face powder you're using. Doesn't matter what, just make sure it's translucent and run it over the eyelid. This will get rid of any tackiness that the eye primer left behind. So any powders you put over top are going to sit on the powder and it will make it easier to blend instead of grabbing onto a sticky base. Not necessary for the more experienced eyeshadow wearers, but I do think it's a great tip if you are not a pro at blending. Now, if you're a beginner to eyeshadow in 2024, you are in luck because simple eyeshadow is in trend anyways. So I'm going to show you a look that's going to be trendy for 2024. It's timeless still, but it is definitely trendy because of how simple it is. So for this eyeshadow look, you're only gonna need two to three eyeshadows. I pulled the Dominique Cosmetics Essential Palette because it has everything we need. It's a great beginner's palette. So you're going to want a light toned matte shade and a mid toned matte shade. Depending on your skin tone, you can go with Compassion if you're lighter or something like True Self if you're more on the medium skin tone range. So for me, I'm going to use Compassion as my mid-tone shade. And if you wanna get more complex, look for a deeper tone shade, which would be True Self. And then finally, if you are into a little bit of glimmer shimmer on the eyelids, pick one shimmery champagne shade, just like this one right here. You don't need this eyeshadow palette in particular, but I think this is a fair price and it has a really great range of colors that you can experiment with. So the first tool you're going to need is what is called a blending brush. Now this is a BK Beauty 201 brush. And what you'll notice about a blending brush is the bristles are longer, but it's not very dense, so you can move them around like this. It should be soft. Now what a dense brush would look like is there's more hairs in the ferrule, which is what this is, and it's pinching those hairs in tighter so that there's a lot less movement. So a blending brush like this one from BK Beauty is an absolute must. I'll link that one down below. To hold the brush, especially when it comes to our crease shades, you want to hold the brush towards the end of the handle because you'll get a softer layer of color. If you choke up on the brush right here, then you might get too much color that you know what to do with and it might become patchy and more difficult to blend. So a light hand for everything today is going to be the trick. It is better to apply just a little bit at first and blend up than applying too much and not knowing what to do with it. So we're gonna start off with that mid-tone. I'm using brown. You can do this with green, blue, purple eyeshadow, but for a good basic everyday look, I do recommend the brown family. So I'm gonna take my mid-tone brown, I'm grabbing the end of the brush and tapping in. If you notice there's some powder fallout here, what you wanna do is tap off your brush lightly, not too hard to get excess powder off so it doesn't fall on your face. And so the powders are only on the bristles here. So we're going to identify our crease. I have more hooded eyes, so I'm gonna go a little bit above where my true crease is. So I'm basically starting right at the crease and blending a little bit up. If you look straight into your mirror, your crease area is basically the strip of skin right here. And you're going to use this is a classic phrase that beauty gurus have been saying for years, windshield wiper motions, and just go back and forth. And that's it for the crease application. Now, if you notice that there's a harsh edge between the skin and the end of the eyeshadow, all you're gonna do is wipe off your brush on the back of your hand, your clothes, a towel, whatever. And so it should be completely clean now. And you're just going to blend that out very softly and you'll see how that creates a nice shadow. If you are doing a full face of makeup, you can actually use your bronzer for this step as well. So I'm gonna tap off my brush, windshield wiper motions back and forth. Once the color is placed, I'm wiping off my brush so that it's nice and cleaned and that way we can blend. When it comes to eyeshadow, you want it to be soft, no harsh edges, at least for beginners. Of course, there's certain looks where there are harsh edges that are necessary, but for an everyday basic look, you 
want it to be a fade out from the shadow to the skin. No harsh edges or lines in the shadow. Now I said you have a light shade. It can be matte or it can be shimmery. For today, I'm going to do a shimmer. Now the brush you're gonna want for what goes on the eyelid right here, that's the eyeball <laughs> where it is when your eyes are closed, is a densely packed shader brush. Now this is what a shader brush looks like. There is a lot of density into this. Now a rule of thumb with makeup, the more densely packed, the thicker layer of color, the stronger amount of color you're going to get. The looser the brush is packed, like this blending brush here, the less pigment you're gonna have, which is going to allow that soft blend. This is a What's Up Beauty R106. So many brands have a version of a shader brush like this, but you can see it's very dense, meaning it's going to pick up a lot of our eyeshadow. I'm going to use this one from the palette. I'm just swirling on one side in the pan. This is what it looks like on my brush. Again, I'm tapping it off because we don't want it to get on my face. And you're going to place this all over the eyelid. Now, the shimmer is going to make the eyelid area pop. I'm gonna show you the difference in a second. Now, when you're applying, use padding motions. I'm not swiping back and forth. That's actually going to get shimmer all over your face, which is not very flattering. You're just gonna want to pat it almost like it's going to stick to the eyelid, which is exactly what's gonna happen. This is the best way to get the most amount of color on the eyelid and to make the least amount of mess. And again, on this eye, notice how I'm holding towards the end of the brush. This is just gonna help the application be mistake proof by going lighter. So I want you to look, do you guys see how that just opened up the eyelids? And you wanna know the most exciting part, if you are truly a beginner and you're trying to keep it as simple as possible, this is all you need for a simple everyday eyeshadow. If that's what you came here for, this is the look. But if you're ready to take it to the next level, I'm going to continue this tutorial, but this is perfectly acceptable for an everyday eyeshadow look. Put on your liner, put on your mascara, and you're good to go. But if you're looking to up the ante a little bit, you need to have a pencil brush in your collection, and it's just going to look like a pointy one like this. This is a What's Up Beauty R107. It's a very densely packed brush, and it comes to a point at the end, which means you can get a more precise application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take that mid-tone brown shade on my pencil brush, always tap off. And remember in the beginning I said there was something called a lower lash line? It's just that lash line on the lower part of your eye. You can add more definition to the eye by placing that mid-tone shade all along the lower lash line. Now I recommend using a tightly packed pencil brush like this because that way the application is very precise. It's not going to look too messy. This is a smaller area of the eye. You want to apply a smaller amount of color. And that right there added almost an instantly more smoky eye. Now, if you're looking for a little bit va va voom, maybe taking it from a day to a night, I said in the beginning, get a deeper toned shade that's similar to what your crease color looked like, but just a little bit deeper. And then I'm going to use a smaller blending brush. Just in comparison, here's the first blending brush I used, and here's a smaller one that I'm switching to. This is from a brand called Refer, and it's a number 13 brush. So I'm going to go into this matte shade right here, tapping off my brush. Now does this shade need to be matte? Here's the thing. I recommend to have at least one matte shadow in every look. You can have as many shimmers as you would like, but having one matte shadow, preferably in the crease, creates the most balanced look. But play around, I do sometimes do all shimmer eye looks, but just for a basic eye look, at least one matte shimmer in the crease will be good. And in the outer corner, I do normally recommend as well. So remember I talked about the outer corner, so. It's quite self-explanatory. You don't want to go too low with the shadow placement because this will drag your eye down. So you want to think of where you place the darkest shadow is where you're going to lift the eye. So if I want my eye to have more of this kind of look, then I would place the darkest point of my shadow right here. 
If I want my eye to have more of a lifted look like this, then I'm going to place the darkest shadow in that direction. So you understand that's how you can get, get a lift to the eye. But generally speaking, keep your darkest color away from below your lower lash line and keep it high and don't be afraid to get it a little bit on the outer part of the eyelid. That's okay, it doesn't need to stay in the crease. The beauty with a blended shadow look is you can get a little bit messy with it. You don't need to get precise with it. So I want you to see the difference in how dramatic and what this does to the eye shape compared to where I do not have the darkest eyeshadow. I'm gonna take my original crease brush that's clean, no color is on it, and I'm going to soften the edge right here. No harsh lines, make sure it's well blended. Holding from the bottom of the brush handle and just going back and forth. I'm gonna do it on the other eye. I'm going for more of this kind of lift. So I'm placing it a little bit more up here and I'm just going circles back and forth like so. And once that color is placed down, and you see this harsh edge right here, go in with that clean blending brush. Just blend it out. Now I'm keeping the area that I'm going back and forth in quite small because you don't want to bring the shadow out too far, but because I want that lifted look, almost like I'm pulling my eye back, that's where you can blend the shadow out to. And you guys, that is it for a basic, everyday, simple eye look that's trendy for 2024 and anybody can do. Go ahead and put on your preferred method of eyeliner and mascara, and you're good to go. And after that, you have the perfect, most flattering and simple eyeshadow look. This look looks good on everybody. The shimmer on the eyelid makes your eyes stand out and look more awake, but we also have some definition from the darker matte shades to really make your eyes stand out more as well. So what are the next steps? You need to continue practicing, look at a lot of different eye tutorials, eye shape tutorials. I think what the most important thing for you to move on next would be to identify your eye shape. If you haven't already, they have great charts online that you can take a look at. And something that I don't think a lot of people say, uh, you can have multiple things going on <laughs> with your eye shape. So for me, I have a hooded eye because I have this layer of, I'm gonna call it fat, it's not fat, that goes over my eyelid, but I also have almond shape eyes as well. So identify your eye shape and look up tutorials specific to your eye shape and I think that will help you experiment some more. Experiment with mattes, experiment with shimmers, experiment with going deeper, experiment with going lighter in different places. It's all about practicing, watching a lot of tutorials, but I hope I laid a great foundation for you in learning how to do your eyeshadow. If you have any other questions, don't be afraid to ask down below. I will try and help you out or some of my other viewers will as well. And I'm going to end it there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. Make sure you like it and subscribe to my channel for more. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.